Hi there, I'm Ben, and welcome to part 5 of my full platinum walkthrough for Dark Souls 3. We're off to Cathedral of the Deep, so we do actually have two choices of where to go now. We're going to do Cathedral of the Deep next. Uh, so in a moment I'm going to go back to the Crystal Sages uh, bonfire and go from uh, go from there and carry on. Uh, I will just say, buy a torch. If you haven't bought the torch for 300, turn around. Go and get the torch. You're going to need it in this next area. <laughs> it's one of the very few places where it comes in extremely handy. So back to the end of Road of Sacrifices. And we're just going to kind of tie this area to the next one and finish it off. Um, at the end of the last video, hopefully you did buy the Crystal Sages Rapier instead of Crystal Hail. Uh, again, don't worry if you didn't and you did actually copy what I did on the video. Uh, I did mention it at the end of the video to change it. Um... It just helps with item discovery. Uh, item discovery is a weird stat. It it sometimes helps. It's some, I mean, it's completely random at the end of the day. Um, you kind of boost your item discovery and it helps with what drops, what enemies drop, or the chance of them dropping a certain thing. Now, it also it doesn't increase the chances of them dropping the rare thing. It just increases the chances of them dropping something. So it's it's a bit of a weird one. It, increasing it can actually hurt sometimes. It's it's a strange stat, but the crystal crystal rapier will actually help and um, increase by fifty. We'll also be getting the symbol of avarice in this video, which will increase by one hundred. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> we'll get quite a bit of uh, increase, and then we're going to do get the gold serpent ring, and that's kind of us done with regards to increasing item discovery. At that point, you'll be ready to start farming, and I will start letting you know the places of where, where to farm certain uh, materials. Uh, they're all different values that we need. I'll let you know at the area, when we get to the area, uh, how many of each covenant item you need. So, uh, yeah, but yeah. For now, we're just kind of doing sunlight medals, and that is 30, you need 30 of those, but I will let you know the rest as we go. So what I've done here, I've just kind of dropped down. You saw me kill the uh, the the big lady. I forgot what they're called. <laughs> the big lady. A lot easier now with the swords. Took out those two guys, and then I'm running across the bridge, and we're going to go and get this bonfire. This kind of signals the beginning, kind of, of the uh, the cathedral of the deep area. If you run down here, you're going to see this NPC. Is actually an NPC. This guy. Um, if you don't kill him, he'll follow you. <laughs> He's not messing around. It's weird because he doesn't see you as you come towards him, but he will follow you if you don't, which is strange. Um, it's quite simple. It's quite fast. He does chuck those darts from a distance. Kind of what I, I was doing, I'm double handing uh, L1, uh, waiting for him to walk towards me. And then starting my combo off as he's kind of walking towards me and catch him in the middle of it so, uh, sort of thing. And uh, pick up the Paladin's Ashes there. That's going to allow you to buy undead um, charms, which we will need for the farming later on. We will have enough from just finding them. We're going to have five in total from just finding them. We've already got two. Uh, we'll find another three. But that's uh, some ashes we need to give to the Shrine Maiden. And she'll sell us extra stuff. One of the one of which the, uh, one of the things being the undead charms that we need. So I'm going up the hill this time. Uh, Going to grab this crest shield, which is uh, a, basically a vanilla version. Well, it has a hundred percent damage reduction than the one I've got on my back. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty cool jump I like to do. It's like one of the only the few places where you can do kind of a running jump on an enemy below. Uh, I'd imagine in Elden Ring there'll be lots of that. I do hope there is. Yeah, because you're going to be fully jumping in that game. This guy's quite easy. You can see he's going all rage and he's buffing himself and he's swinging his big axe around. But he's actually fairly easy to break. Well, he's gone. Uh, <laughs> break through his defences. You can see I kind of staggered him. When you do stagger an enemy, if you sort of break their shield block. Uh, if you push into them and press R1, you'll, you'll do a repost. Most of the time it's just better to keep wailing on him. Right, this area I've just gone in and I've hooked straight to the left hand side and I'm sticking to the left and going through this kind of ravine-ish type area to get all the way around it. Now if you want to, you can just leave, but there is a large soul of unknown traveller here. That's like the only thing that is here, so I'm going to show you where it is in case you want extra souls for whatever reason. But there are a lot of dogs and a lot of crossbow guys in here. 
And uh, if you go was like up the front, um, that was not the right terminology to use. <laughs> if you just travel straight ahead, these guys will be uh, shooting all sorts of arrows at you. The dogs will come running after you, and it's just a nightmare. It's, well, it's quite a horrible area, actually. But if you go uh, round to the side and then drop in on them, then uh, you get the ele element of surprise. Yeah, the crossbow guys are quite good to dodge. You can see I did a little just sidestep them. You can kind of tell when they're about to shoot. Uh, and then just kind of sidestep a little bit. Don't try and block it because they do have fire damage on their uh, their bolts. So it's just going to... You're going to have some damage come your way. Uh, just sidestep them. They don't track you at all. So once they've left, they won't track you. And uh, yeah, that was it really. That's all we did. <laughs> uh, and now we're actually at Cathedral of the Deep. Just one boss right at the end of this area. Lots of... Uh, other things going on in this area. There's a covenant. We're not going to join. We're actually going to skip part of this area and do it in the next video. This is a new enemy type. The kind of exploding, screaming <laughs> thing. Uh, they're not too bad. Just be, be aware that they might change. They don't always change. They might change and then they'll sort of stab themselves and then run after you and explode. Just run away, or you can kind of casually walk away once you're a certain distance away. They uh, they don't wait to get to you to explode. They have sort of, they're on a sort of a timer, sort of three to five seconds, whatever it is, and then they'll just blow up. Uh, this guy here, do not worry about him. He is a DLC thing. I'm using the Fire Fades edition of Dark Souls Three, so I have the DLC kind of built into the game. Uh, don't worry about him. We don't need to go into the DLC for any trophies. There's no trophies attached to it at all. But if you want to go and do it, go and do it. You just speak to him and go through the whole thing. Uh, it's difficult, but yeah, have fun. There's some good stuff in the, the DLC, but we're not going to be touching any of the DLC at all. Uh, so that bonfire is the only kind of bonfire in this area. Well, there is another one right by the, uh, the Covenant. But uh, we'll be opening up two shortcuts. It's like old school... Dark Souls this, uh, when you're opening up all the shortcuts, just all lead back to one singular bonfire. Uh, that area I showed you there is a shortcut. I will be using it later on to go lower down so you don't have to do this horrendous bit here. Uh, so picked up that Estus Shard, make sure you grab that off the where those four guys were. I'm going to run up, so look for the second left hand turn, so to speak. Uh, and there's the Astora Greatsword, which is quite a good greatsword if you're into using uh, greatswords. Uh, it's good for infusions and things like that. It scales very well. Uh, these guys are... Hor they look very innocent. They almost look like the... Yeah, that is what I was looking for. One of them to do that. Uh, those worm things, if they hit you with that sort of worm throw-up that they do, you'll get covered in worms and you will... S slowly your bleed, well it's actually quite quick, we'll, your bleed bar will fill up, once it fills up you'll take a massive amount of damage. If you just casually get your torch into your hand, just hold it in your hand, you don't need to do anything with it, so equip it, the uh, leeches, whatever they are, will fall off, which you're going to see in a moment, because I can usually just walk straight past that guy. Uh, you, I don't know why, but then I'm, I'm stood here doing the stupid torch thing, and uh, he comes up behind me. They do hit quite hard. So the leeches have fallen off, but he keeps reapplying them because I'm messing around. Now, my equip load is right on the border line. It's right on the border line. I could have, at this point, taken off Flynn's ring for a bit and uh, just held the torch. I probably should have done that. In hindsight, I definitely should have done that. But you're going to see me switching to from... I get hit a lot. I, I can usually go through this area and not get hit by the, <laughs> the worm guys at all. But I get hit a lot because, of course, I'm recording. So you'll see me switching to the torch quite a lot. Uh, this is a new type of enemy. They use twin blades like we do. Uh, they are quick. They have very erratic movements. They track very well. But they're also quite weak to being hit. But, well, most things are. Uh, so as long as you're quick and sort of you are the first in on the combo, you can take care of them quite easily. And then uh, you can see rusty arrows here, so you know what this means. Again, with the, I, th he was too slow. He killed him after I got there. So some of those other ones, like I did miss a single weapon. I think it was an axe. 
um, up in that graveyard where all those guys were. It, if you want to go and try and find it, feel free. But there's <laughs> these things. You get ambushed. It's a horrendous place. Just don't bother. Uh, so I'm yeah, switching to and from. I do apologise. I will be seeing me doing this quite a few times because I do it. So I'm picking up these young white branches. You can pick those ones up. Uh, what a young white branch does, by the way, is a PvP thing, really. Uh, it turns you... So maybe if you do get invaded, may try using one. Um, they'll probably find you anyway, because the, the players will know the game inside out. But um, it turns you into your surround... Something from your surroundings, basically. It camouflages you. But uh, yeah, they're a one-time use thing. Never going to use them. Repair powder, probably never going to use that either. And then, most importantly, undead bone shard. No, bone ash. There's another one. Another one. Did he get me? No, he did not. We're good. The, ar the arrow guy came through. The giant. So it is the same giant. And then we're going to open up a shortcut so we don't have to do all that that we just did. The Curse Ward Great Shield here, that's from the uh, Pursuer in Dark Souls 2. You may recognise that shield. And we'll drop down. So the shortcut is technically open now, because uh, you've dropped that ladder down. That that bit by where the four guys were, where we got the Esther Shard, I got hit again here. These things are, are not that bad, they're really not. They look horrendous, but if you can dodge their first attack, Three hits and they should be dead if you're the same kind of level with me. With L1 hits, that is. So, yeah, I get hit by every single one of them. Like a complete idiot. Um, yeah, the shortcut is technically open now. If you drop down where I showed you where the four guys were looking around that cenotaph kind of thing, where the Estes Shard was, down to the right-hand side, if you drop down, you'll be in this bit here. And you can use the ladder to go back up. Uh. <laughs> I don't really, these enemies are, are fine. They don't bother me. Usually, I can just go straight through them. But this time, of course not. Saint Tree Belvine. Very quick there. <laughs> uh, that's a, a, a miracle thing. I thought this guy was dead. I hit him three times, and he's got he's got no health left. So that's why I got hit on that one. You see how annoyed I am getting <laughs> hit every single time. Having to change back. Is that the last time? I think that's the last time. That might be, yeah, I think that's the last time. Right, we're good. Uh, yeah, that bell vine, if you kind of hold it in your offhand, it gain health back really slowly. And it allows you to cast miracles or something. Uh, I don't use any of the spells in this game, to be honest. Of course, feel free to experiment and do them yourself. Uh, Twinkling Titanite, you saw me pick up two right at the beginning of this video. Another one there, Titanite Shard there as well. Twinking, twinkling Titanite is what you need to upgrade this shield on my back. Not all shields use Twinkling Titanite. Usually it's just regular Titanite. Um, but this one is kind of a bit of a special because it has that, that extra ability in that it passively increases your regen of your stamina. Uh, it's special. <laughs> So in upgrading shields is not essential, it really isn't, it doesn't help with their damage absorption or anything like that, it just makes them a bit sturdier, that's it, and it's marginal. We will do it because why not, we're going to have the resources to do so, but uh, yeah, you don't need to upgrade all of them or anything, just pick one, one your favourite one and do that one. Another crystal lizard here. <laughs> you might have just seen me probably rewind and see that. Uh, you can see me, I'd sort of flash my shield at him because I thought I was two handed. So I was pressing L1 to try and hit him. But uh, no dice. So yeah, we're actually going to fight one this time. They're actually quite simple. Uh, it's a big beast. I should have dodged at that point, but I, I went for the kill instead. The one thing you shouldn't really do in Dark Souls. And you get a Titanite scale, that's another material that's for uh, different weapons again yay managed to dodge one so we're going into this little secret area and we're going to get the poison bite ring which helps with uh, poison resistance 
we will need that for the next area. Or you can use it. You don't need it. It can help in the next area. So through this window is our bonfire. This is one. This I tech, suppose technically this is another short. This is kind of uh, a get back to the bonfire as opposed to a shortcut. The shortcuts are on the left and right hand side here. So I'm just going to sit down because we're going to drop literally straight back down into where we just were. I'm going to show you that shortcut and uh, go back up the ladder now. And there we go. So I will start as I get more health and I get more stamina. You'll see me start double handing this weapon a lot more as opposed to using the shield. There are certain enemies where I will hold the shield up because they're just annoying. Um, and hopefully you're able to start doing that as well because being able to put out a lot of damage and take care of enemies quickly seems to be more important than being defensive. Uh, take that sort of bloodborne approach. With the ring we're using as well, the, the, the left pontify, um, it, you can. You can take that bloodborne approach because you'll get your health back, uh, which you will see in the boss fight at the end of this video as well. Lots and lots of enemies, just keep hitting them. Health keeps coming back, I keep getting hit, it doesn't matter, it's it's great. So I'll just let that uh, that enemy walk past this, the Grave Warden walk past this time so I don't have to fight it. Uh, come and get some rusted coins. They temporarily increase your item discovery. I've just remembered there's actually a Titanite Shard around here that I didn't pick up, so I'll just show you where that is in case you still need one. Around here, and now I'm gonna have to uh, wait for the grave warden again. I think I'm actually fight her this time. Yeah, she's kind of spotted me, so I guess we're doing this. They usually do that that double handed attack at the start, which you can roll straight through and get behind them and get the drop on them. They do drop their own twin blades as well, they're not as good as these ones. I think they scale off luck or something like that. Some uh, red bug pellets there. Now this bit, you, can, you want to run down the stairs, hit this guy, because he's going to use these undead charms on you. If he hits you with one, you won't take any damage, but you won't be able to heal for about 30 seconds. Quite a long time, actually. You'll be able to tell if you're hit, because the uh, Estus Fast will be greyed out, and you won't be able to use it. Uh, so the reach saw me sort of run back up behind that pillar. is not because I was running away. It actually draws the crossbow guy down as otherwise he'll just stay up there and you can't get to him, which is annoying. This guy will usually run up here, uh, climb up here, and uh, set himself on fire and run at you. So beware of that. There's four guys there in total, one at the bottom right-hand side of the stairs. Uh, run back, get the crossbow guy to drop down, and then go back down and deal with them. Right, this is where I'll start using the shield a bit more. This guy always tries to blow up as well. The shield. There's these guys, where are they? There, you can see them just kind of hanging off. They're all over the place. All over the place. There's one up there. There's one going to drop on the bridge there. So, move forward a bit. And then run back. And they do have this nasty habit of using firebombs. The big one will follow you. The one with the sword will follow you. So, uh, take care of him. And then move forward and get this one. You don't want it, yeah. <laughs> they, you don't want them ganging up on you. Kill this guy because you can get two others jumping over the wall here. Once you grab this, uh, one of them will probably blow himself up. So that's why I'm running away a bit. <laughs> Step back a bit. Yeah. So beware that there's those guys are going to drop on you from all over the place. Quite annoying. Here, there's going to be three crossbow guys. Uh, usually two will stay on this top bit here, one stays here, the other one would usually be directly behind him. So you're going to want to act, be careful here, try and just go for the crossbow guys, don't move too far to the left. As you can see there's a guy with the, uh, the shield and the spear. So you can usually just do the crossbow guys and uh, get away with it. Just dodge side to side rather than rolling. And then do a backup. So I, I, I have a habit of getting this jump. Well, this is one of the easiest jumps in the game. I have a habit of missing this one. So I, that's why I did. You can see there. Almost pushed me off to the side again. Um, 
Yeah, so do a backup save if you think you're going to miss that jump. Now, th that jump is not essential. It, it really isn't. What it is going to allow you to do is get the drop on the guys that would get the drop on you. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Where is he? Where are you? There you are. One more. Just clear them out a bit. It's a bit of a shortcut as well, but we are going to go back and get everything else anyway. So you can see these guys, especially these two are the worst ones. They'll drop on top of you when there's already two or three enemies uh, down there that you have to deal with. So get go up there, take care of all of them, and then uh, come this way. And we've gone full circle. It's back where we were. So uh, run here, get their attention, run away. One of those evangelists. Hey, I remember what they were called. Evangelists there get to follow you down here. You should be able to take care of her quite easily now. One, two, three, four. Now you can see that they take five, and I, I run out of stamina on the four, which is annoying. I will be putting quite a few points into uh, stamina just to get rid of that, so I'm able to do five in a row. So watch out for this halberd guy. He's going to come up. He, he usually doesn't come up the stairs, to be honest. That's why I wasn't expecting him. So uh, get rid of him. He ha he hits very hard, but he is actually quite slow. Uh, here you're going to see me get hit by uh, him first. And there I get hit by one of those undead charms, the hunter charms. I can't heal now. You can see the Esther's flask is greyed out. I'm nearly dead. If this guy hits me, he will kill me. And you can see there's a little aura around you. And there we go. We're actually going to pick some up. And we're going to use these to farm for um, the symbol of avarice on the next mimic chest that we go to. We're going to get that out of the way now. There we go. Able to heal again. So th at this point here, there's going to be a guy to the left. You probably have the, the guy with the halberd in front of you. And then two of them would drop down. It's quite annoying. So there's the item there. There's one going to drop out down behind you. you. Can quite easily get behind these guys, which is good. Just let them swing. <laughs> so yeah, that's why we went up there before to uh, clear the way. That was quite annoying. Hitting the wall. And that's quite annoying. <laughs> So don't go running up here, take it quite slow, because you can see there's one of the uh, Twin Blades enemies, which you can... This one's weird, this one usually paces back and forth, does not stand there usually, but there is one coming to the right, I'm slowly going because there's one to the left, there we go, Grave Warden, you do not want two of those after you, so take it slow. Stamina, see, I, my stamina is quite, it's, it's more than reasonable, but uh, I'm used to having more, obviously, because I've just done a, a practice run, so I'm going to put points in that soon. Uh, also, watch out to the left-hand side on the stairs, there's also going to be um, two exploding enemies. That was bad timing. So yeah, they, you can see they did. Uh, they do actually breathe fire sometimes. It is quite rare. They'll usually come after you. I mean, look at the health there. They got no health. Ninety-eight. Here they come. Both of them will blow up. You do still get the souls, which you didn't get in Dark Souls Two. I don't think you got the souls of the exploding enemies in that one. What you do here, so we are almost at a shortcut, almost. Uh, I would probably say if you don't want to fight these enemies here and are, are, are panicking a bit because your Estus is down, don't come and do this bit here, it's only an ember. You can come and do it after you've sat at the bonfire, I'm just doing it now. Most importantly to remember, there is a big axe wielding guy here. Some of them are going to explode, which is good, because they'll take out all the others if they hit them. They did hit the axe guy, so he does have damage on him. His tracking is, is quite good, uh, which you're going to see in a moment. 
I <laughs> dodged it far too early on the dodge there. So yeah, be aware he's going to come after you. So kind of wake them up a bit. Some of them will explode. And pick up your ember. Or come and do this afterwards. So now we're finally... What, what are we in? Uh, 25 minutes and we're actually in the cathedral, finally. <laughs> Big giant. Well, is there such a thing as a small giant? Probably not. Uh, these things, these blobs, watch out for them. Just avoid them, though. Uh, they're a bit of a pain. Extremely weak to fire. <laughs> Using the torch as a weapon, so if you put it in your, your hand, your, your left hand and use L1, uh, R2, uh, L2, sorry, um, it does a lot more damage than the blades we're currently using. They're that weak to fire. So watch out for these three. They're simple enough, but they will start firing uh, fire at you if you uh, don't close the gap on them. And then come here, down this lift here, and we're going to open up shortcut number one. So we're all the way back at the church. Or the altar. Where the DLC guy is. There he is. So you can sit now. Uh, refresh. I'm actually going to teleport away. Go back to uh, Firelink. Do some upgrading. Use the Bone Shard and the Bone Ash Dust. Uh, because why not all the enemies ahead of us uh, we've not killed yet so it doesn't matter if the ones behind us respawn uh, you don't need to do what I'm about to do because I didn't actually look at how many of these you can hold we, we've got the max so give the maiden the ash that we picked up right at the beginning and we're going to be able to buy undead hunter charms now um, you should have five we picked up two in an earlier video and we've just picked up three so you should have five. That is the maximum you can carry. Uh, anything else will go into storage. So I'm buying five more. D I didn't need to. Five is enough. Um, yeah, so it, you'll see that start happening as well later on. Uh, when you reach your max carry for an item, it will automatically, the rest of them will automatically go to your uh, storage. It all happens automatically, so don't worry. So, upgrade the Estus. Check our friend's still there. There he is. He's not run away yet. And then I'm going to put everything into uh, stamina. Into endurance. Endurance caps at 40. Well, everything has a sort of soft and hard cap. Diminishing returns and all that. 40 for endurance, you don't get any more stamina after 40, so that's our target for that. Uh, health keeps go kind of going, but once you hit, I think it's 40 or 50, um, obviously diminishing returns, you get less, so you might as well invest it elsewhere. Primarily, though, we want to be uh, concentrating on dexterity. Damage output. So we'll go back the way we came now. Go all the way back. It's so good, so relieving to find these short. Well, it's not find a shortcut, is it? To hit those bonfires, open up the shortcuts, and uh, it might even be the best part of these games. <laughs> Evangelist down here should. Now you're going to see the difference. I couldn't do a fifth uh, attack on the last one. I can now do the full five L1s to completely tear her apart before she's able to do anything else. Makes all the difference. Deep gem there, that's one of the infusions we need to do, so make sure you grab that. We'll do all the infusions towards the end. We'll just buy like 10 swords and do them all at once. Uh, obviously, if you want to mess around with infusions, feel free. Just remember which ones you've already done. Stop. <laughs> that guy's always going to drop down. He won't drop down as you go down. I'm not going to bother killing him. There's no point killing him. Just leave him. Run past him. 
and run 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 do not stop for the items do not stop for the enemy just run he's gonna blow up anyway so it doesn't matter stamina's run out run run and he gets me uh, that's actually not a lot of damage it's usually a lot more from him so run all the way around just forget the items we'll get them later we're gonna kill that guy that uh, giant we can get them then There's going to be quite a few more of these thralls dropping around. I don't know where he's, he's... I don't actually know where he came from. I think he was one of the archers on the top, which we're going to kill soon. I think that's who that was. Thralls everywhere. Just block... The, this is why I use the shield. These are one of the few enemies I will definitely always have the shield up because they're so... Their movement is... You can't read it. It's, it's a real pain. Uh, another blob there you can see on the ceiling. So if you kind of move forward slightly or in from the side until you get the prompt. And that is a miracle that we need. Not that we'll ever use it, but there you go. Trophies. That's why we're doing this. <laughs> right, there's going to be a evangelist at the top. She may be right there or she may be off to the left-hand side. She's off to the left hand side for me, which is good. That's the attack I want you to do. So this is, we're above the where we ran around now. So uh, there are the items that I said leave and that, I, this doesn't go well. <laughs> uh, I can't get to him prop. there we go. There's the giant. He's gone, gone back to sleep for a minute. Grab this ember here. So the reason I've come, come up here is to kill those archers. I think the one that followed us... I'm sure there's usually two up here. I'm sure there are. Um, I'm just going to drop down here, take the damage. It's fine. And uh, carry on. Run away. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's usually two up there. I think that's the guy who followed us down here. Right. We're going to do some symbol of avarice farming. So this is a mimic chest. So do a backup save now because, yeah, just do one because you might need to reload it. So do a backup save, use USB, PS Plus, whatever, PC. I don't know how to do it on PC or on Xbox, but however you're doing it. And then equip your undead hunter charms here. Uh, now you're going to want to walk towards the, uh, the mimic, hit it so it wakes up. And then throw an undead hunter charm and it'll go back to sleep. Like that. And it will give you its item. So the deep braille tome is uh, something obviously we need for uh, miracles. It's what it, it it drops every time. That's its item. It will always drop that. Uh, now what we're doing is cycling it uh, to make it try and drop the symbol of avarice. So we're going to hit it. Wake it up. Throw one of those undead hunter charms. Don't worry, it'll still go through the animation and then fall back asleep. And then if you're lucky, you will get a symbol of avarice, like that. There you go. That was actually quite quick. <laughs> I was not expecting it that quick. Uh, but you only get sort of five chance. Well, you get five hunter charms, uh, a sixth chance, because if you kill it, you also get a chance. If you don't get it, reload your save, try again. Uh, just don't kill it if you're going to run away and get some more because uh, it, it won't come back. Obviously, once you kill it, it's dead. Um, yeah, hopefully you get that. And then the symbol of Avarice is a horrible helmet, to be honest. That's what it is. Uh, it's really bulky. It's horrible to wear, but it in increases your item discovery by 100. It also slowly drains your life while you're wearing it. <laughs> so I will tell you when to put it on when we're going to use it, but we've got it for now. Uh, these guys, have, you can see he's done yeah, to his uh, his weapon, he's kind of infused it. He puts little bombs on the floor when he does that. No, don't do that, he's healing himself. It's actually a good time to go in and get them when they heal. He has a great shield, so he is going to do that and completely break all your stamina down. Just want to get him to do it. Come on, swing! No, don't do that. Swing. Yes, that's what I want you to do. So he's planting those things on the floor. You can see them. But I know if I go for a backstab and get the backstab, I'll be invincible. So it doesn't matter about that. 
get rid of him. Now, I hope you like spiders and wolves, because we have a wolf spider. This is an interesting room, because it doesn't actually have a ceiling. You can't see anything. So run forward, grab the amber, and then turn around. And there's going to be a wolf spider thing, which is not too bad. It dies quite quickly. It's quite weak to damage. Uh, but what it do is doing is curse build up. Every time it hits you, it adds a little bit of curse. If your curse goes full, you die instantly. That's it. <laughs> it's not like the other games though, where your uh, health gets reduced. It doesn't. It does no land. There's no lasting effect from it. Uh, if you're struggling with that thing, just stand outside of the room and shoot it with arrows. Simple. Um, it drops Aldrich's ring, so that's why we did that because it's one of the rings that we obviously need. Now, if you are still Embered, you will get invaded here by Longfinger Kirk. <laughs> How they come up with these names, I do not know. Don't worry, that giant's not going to get you until you go near it. He shouldn't actually be stood up like that right now. He's stuck in uh, the wrong uh, position. He shouldn't be like that. Uh, this guy's simple enough. He's quite quick. Um, his armor and his shield are spiked, so if he rolls into you, he actually does damage to you. You'll see me take a little bit. Of, no, not then. Take a little bit of damage from being hit by uh, by him rolling. But yeah, it's it's simple enough. You get the double hand. Now, don't worry if you aren't embered and this doesn't happen. You don't need anything from him. We're gonna get the spiked shield and the barbed whatever it was. <laughs> I'll never use it. We don't need it. It's fine. Uh, but then just know that if you are embered, you will get invaded there. So you're going to see the giant go back to the uh, where the way he should be as I go towards him. There we go. <laughs> That's how it should be. Uh, these guys are really simple. Now don't lock on. I'm going to show you what happens if you lock on. You'll go to each leg, but you'll have it'll be all over the place like that. So lock off and just nip at the at, at the heels. And uh, yeah, just kind of stay a bit behind it. Most of the time it'll do kind of a sweep. Sometimes it'll do a stomp. Uh, so it's going to do the sweep again. It can't get you with the sweep if you're underneath it. So don't worry. Just keep moving from leg to leg. And uh, watch out for the stomps. The stomps have quite a big area. And uh, eventually you'll kill it. It's very easy. Down here it's very, very easy. Up there is no joke. So now that area is clear, we can go and run back and get those items in a moment, which is what we'll do. We'll just uh, go down here and grab a couple of Homeward Bones and a Bident. Not needed for anything in particular, but they are down here. And I just like opening doors in Dark Souls. I don't know. It's like the most intense thing. There's such so dramatic door opening. <laughs> so much effort put into it and there's a hell of a view as well that's where we're going next down there I oh, know is that where we came from anyway it all looks the same <laughs> lots of tall trees and actually it probably isn't that's probably where we came from no that's where we're heading I don't know <laughs> trust me I know where we're going I just don't know whether it's actually that bit so yeah, you get the, the soul there, that will be there. And this large titanite and dung pie is the drop from the giant. That will That is guaranteed, that will happen. Uh, so if you traded with Rumpa Pum, Pumper Rum, whatever it's called, uh, you will have two large titanite now. That's enough to do the next level on this weapon, which we will do just before the boss. We have yet another giant to kill yet. So... Um, yeah, run past these, you can see the spitting kind of poison. Uh, another great thing about this game is enemies can get poisoned. But it's quicker just to kill them than wait for them to die of poisoning. So we're just going to nip back, go the way we came. The main reason for this is Lloyd's sword ring. It's obviously a ring that we need. So back past the, uh, the Mimic. And now the coast is clear. So Lloyd's Sword Ring, if you're really, really, really good and don't take damage ever, it's probably one of the best rings you could wear. <laughs> uh, 
uh, it gives you, I think it's 10% increase. Is it 10? I think it's 10. So your damage, um, damage output, but only if you're at like 100% health. <laughs> so if you, you can guarantee that you'll always have 100% health, then put that ring on. It's quite good, but uh, I doubt it. I'm not going to wear it. It's a trick ring. You think, oh, that's great. I'll always be at uh, full health. I'll just heal through it. There's better ones. Now we're going to go open up shortcut number two. And we are we're pretty much done. We're nearly at the end of this area. We could run straight to the boss from here. But we have um, a little bit of setting up to do of some side quests and things like that. So, uh, yeah. There's where we were before, where we got that ring. Um, and one of those worm monsters was. So there's going to be a door on my right hand side. You can see I'll open it in a moment. There's going to be a lift that takes us right up to another area and up to a covenant. Um, we're not going to do that in this video. We're going to come right back to here in the next video. Because like there's the bonfire, so we'll warp straight here and do it. It's where Rosaria's Covenant is. Now, there was an NPC in Firelink, the, the woman, sort of holy knight looking woman, all white and ethereal looking. Um, we have spoke to her, she's called Cirrus. If you join the uh, Rosaria's Covenant, she will not speak to you and become hostile. So... Uh, don't do that because we need to get in this playthrough we need to get a uh, a gesture from her before we do that and we can do that in the next area we need to give some ashes in and then she'll come back uh, give us the gesture and that that then at that point we will go back here do Rosario's covenant hand in a pale tongue and that's going to allow a an NPC to be summoned it, and we've got to summon that NPC just to get a gesture. Now, there's no way of doing both of them. Because uh, Sirius we need later on. You would meet her again and she would uh, give you a ring. But then that means we would have missed this other gesture. It's a pain, but we're going to do the, uh, the more difficult one. The one we actually have to go out of our way to do this time around. So we'll do that covenant later uh, in the next video. Get rid of that close one. So, yeah, there's quite a few of those blob things in this water. Just dodge around them. The giant will actually help you kill them. There's the stomp. And he stomps forward. Which uh, does quite a lot of damage. So, yeah, you can see he's hurting the uh, thing. You can see there's a sort of worm thing sort of crawling down the stairs. That doesn't usually spawn yet. I'm sure it doesn't. It's usually as you get closer to the stairs. I must have got too close to the stairs. That will also die. That's one of uh, Rosaria's sort of minions. Um, it drops down from the top. It's just kind of to let you know that that's where it is. The Covenant is above where we are now. There it goes, it's dead. So same thing really, just wait for the sweeps and uh, look out for the start. I think I get hit with a full on stomp because I move away. No, he, that's it, he hits me. Because I wasn't underneath him. And I get full on stomped on here. <laughs> that didn't go well. Yeah, obviously you, you have very restricted movement in this stuff. You slow. And there we go. Still quicker than the giant. Now you can sit, stay here all day and take all care of all of them if you want. There's no reason to do that. All you want to make sure you do is grab the large tide tonight from the, the giant and leave them. It's fine. Uh, and then there's going to be another armor set all kind of spread out in here. And that is the Drang set. If you play Dark Souls 2, that will make sense. It's Drang as in Dranglaic. Uh, it is the Faram armor. So a pale tongue, that is a, one of the covenant items for Rosarias. Uh, we do need to farm more of them. We have th th two. We're going to get another one uh, and we'll farm the rest later on. So up these stairs is the boss. Not like literally, it's not the boss is not right there. <laughs> uh, we could run straight to it now. It's just to the right. 
But we're going to go and see an old friend first. Uh, so we have a couple of the the kind of clerics here with the fire. I'm kind of getting him to draw over towards me because there is one of those knights there. And I hate the ones with the sword. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the same sword that the guy, the NPC that invaded me in the previous video was using because I'm sure it's the same moveset. I just don't think I can handle that moveset very well. That must be what it is. Now, I should have waited. I should have got the attention of the other guy. It does put me off that he's there. He hits extremely hard. He's got delays in his... Yeah... <laughs> He's got delays in his attacks. He hits extremely quickly out of nowhere. Obviously, he doesn't have a shield, so you don't need to worry about him guarding. But, uh, yeah, the delay there. I just wasn't on it at all. He won't follow you down the stairs, so if you need to get away, go down the stairs. Ah, no, don't do it. <laughs> yep, get yourself caught. Nearly die. That's how you're supposed to do it. That's terrible. Right, let's get rid of this pyromancer. He's not even a pyromancer, is he? He's just casting pyromancies. And get behind them. Get the backstab. Charge R2. Get out of here. <laughs> now, if you were unlucky, the pyromancy will have hit, or the, the, the knight will hit the benches. If you don't hit these benches, the other enemies won't wake up. You can just run around run around them. Uh, if they do, you'll have to deal with them. Just leave them, if not. Now, I'm going around in circles here because I've completely blanked on where the lift is. <laughs> I've just walked past it, by the way. So I'll get rid of these two. And then I think it's here, and it's not here. I'm thinking, where the hell has it gone? I, I don't know how many times I've been up this lift. I can't for the life of me. And I go, oh, that's a nice looking thing. Where? And then, yes, it dawns on me. I've run straight past it. You can actually run to this lift without fart f farting. <laughs> Fighting the guy with the sword. It's all that pink eye that's running around here. Um, so this is the lift that we need to go all the way up to the top. And we're going to open up the main door to the cathedral. This is going to allow a certain NPC to enter. He won't unless you reset the area, so we've got to go and do that first. So I'm going to run back. So you should recognize where we are now, right at the start. Yep, there's you. We'll just ignore you for now. Now I could bone and go straight to the bonfire. If you want to do that, do that. But for the sake of saving them, we don't don't need to save them, not gonna use them that often. We will get an infinite use one eventually as well. Another coiled sword. But it's right here. So I'm just going to leave the area and uh, and then come back. And that's gonna add two NPCs to this area. Uh, one of them we're not going to bother with right now. I don't want to spoil the surprise of who they are, so I'm not going to mention names yet. If you know, you know. But having said that, that's kind of obvious, isn't it? <laughs> it's a weird saying that, isn't it? If you know, you know. Well, of course. So we're going to upgrade, because we now have three large. So we'll be able to put the first, get it up to plus four. Be careful. So the scaling is going up. Every time we upgrade these weapons, the scaling is getting in is increasing um, until it's sort of at A, which is great. So I'm uh, putting a few into uh, the bow, uh, which I don't think I, I did then. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, but the grass crest shield, I'm going to put a few twinkling tides knight into that. Not essential. If you don't, if you want to save your tides knight for something else in the future, then uh, save it. But I know this is what I'll be sticking with. Put some more in decks so the um, damage output's more. Another one for uh, endurance is um, 
it increases how much damage you can take as well. Same with strength. All of the upgrades kind of have a, a main one that they do, and then they also do kind of side ones as well, but a lot less. There's a well to the right hand side of me there. There is a person in there now. Um, I'm not going to say who. We don't need to speak to them at this point, but we will speak to them later on. So that's one of the two NPCs that has now spawned in. That was a long climb. Probably should have cut that out. I could just cut this out and say run back, but I, d I don't want to do things like that because the whole idea of these guides is I'm showing absolutely everything. You might not know where you're going. This could be the first time you're playing this game and get lost, and I don't want that. Well, there we go. We're going to avoid the uh, Grave Warden and run up here, and we're back through the main door, and this time we're going to go to the right and go down here. And you're going to see our old friend, Mr. Onion. Go through all of the dialogue. He's going to tell you some treasure across the way. Uh, so exhaust the dialogue, you know, until he starts repeating himself. Pick up the jewel charm, which is something you would throw at somebody who's using infusions on their weapons. And then a cutscene as you run across here. And it wasn't Onion all along. It was Patches. And because we already killed the giant, he's going <laughs> to... Where's the bloody giant gone? Uh, yeah, he's the idea he's supposed to be lowering us into the giant and then he's going to loot our corpse. You know, the usual Patches thing. Um, so now that you know that that is Patches, uh, the person in the well is Siegfried. Because, of course, it is. He, he got tricked. Uh, and Patches is wearing his armour. So what we need to do is we need to speak to Patches. Yeah, it's this guy again. Uh, we need to speak to Patches um, to buy Sigurd's armor. But we can't do that yet until we go to the Rosario Covenant and sort of resolve that situation. And then he'll go back to Firelink. So we'll do that uh, that in the next video. But uh, you can miss what just happened then. you can miss, If you go to Rosario's first by going up the lift through the rafters and drop down the other side, you'll miss everything that just happened. And uh, Patches will automatically lock you into the tower in uh, Firelink uh, when you go in there. So we're going to go in there as well to get him to spawn. Now you saw sort of a transition there. I ran through there and um, it transitioned back. I went to check something. It's okay, you don't need to go and do it. I just cut it out. You'd think I'd be used to fighting these ones by now. You really would. It's because I try and go for the backstab so much. I shouldn't bother. I really should not bother. This is a horrible move. I'm just making a complete mess of this. Oh, that's so close. I swear this guy, this guy should be the boss of the area. <laughs> Stop swinging. God, there we go. If I just hit, if I just wailed on him, I'd probably be all right. I think you can stagger them. If I'd have just gone in with L1 double handing, I probably would kill him a lot easier. It's that fear, you know, of getting hit. Um, he hits so hard. Right, two summon signs here. This is the boss arena coming up. So uh, do a back. I'm doing a backup save. It's just easier for me if anything goes wrong. Uh, do one if you want, and then we're going to do some summoning. Uh, you don't have to bring anyone in with this fight. It's easy enough without. Uh, what I'm just going to show you is how to set your own sign down. I said I would do it. So if you go into your uh, items and look for the soapstone, the white sign soapstone, and then do use. You will leave your own sign. Now, other players will be able to see that if they're in this area. Um, 
and they will summon you to their world and as long as you are a sunlight in the sunlight covenant you've got that item set you will go you will help them with the boss uh, and then you'll get a sunlight medal and that's the idea is that you keep doing that over and over again 30 times in total and uh yeah that's one to look out for now another thing to look out for is whenever you do a boss if there's a person doing the same thing uh, look out for those golden uh, orangey looking summon signs bring them in uh, i'll be doing it if there's any around when i'm doing it i'll do it as well just to speed the whole process up uh, if not i'm just bringing anri in bring anri in why not she's great it's easy enough boss though it looks like really intimidating there's lots of deacons it's fine you're gonna see this ring do loads of work so look for the red one he's your one who you want to kill one of them is um there he is the one with the red it's going to move up so once you kill him it's going to move to another one or he'll sort of walk over it pick it up and um kill him and it'll move off again and then just keep doing that and you can see how my life gain i'm getting hit but i'm killing so many of these guys it doesn't even matter if i get hit and um yeah, just keep going. And then eventually, once you're at half, uh, a permanent one will show up. The kind of the, the real deacon guy, the main one. And it will stay on him. Again, just keep wailing on him. Just look for him. Uh, take the damage. If you've got the ring on the same one as me, you can just keep wailing on him. And uh, the fight will be over very quickly. Very easy fight. And that was with extra health. <laughs> they had extra health because of the summon there. So, um, yeah, not a difficult one. Like I said, that guy with the sword deals more of a problem than uh, the deacons do. Uh, if you come back to this area after leaving it, there'll be an armor set for you if you want it. I'm not going to go and get it, though. Uh, nope, not going up there yet. We've not done the other part of Patches thing. So I'm going to level up put it into decks why not we'll get it up to 30 I need a little bit more so I'll use one of the smallest uh, souls so yeah don't be afraid to use these white ones these white uh, hardest hard souls uh, just don't use the boss ones you can see we have been buying uh, boss uh, weapons and uh, boss spells don't use them I'm not going to use the Deacon one yet. We'll get. Uh, I'll use that next time. This guy's back, so whenever he's back, speak to him in case he gives you anything. He probably won't at this point. And then uh, also check on this side, and Anri will be back. So make sure to speak to Anri here. He's not going to say much. Uh, speak to Anri, because it's continuing on with her quest line, and we need that for the ending. Very important. So exhaust dialogue on both of those. And that's going to be us done this uh, this video that's it for this one far and keep next so the kind of midpoint the point of no return ish so I'm gonna go to my storage box put all my swords and shields and what have you in there and uh, clean everything up right that's it for this one thanks very much for watching I'll see you on the next one